I remember when he told me that, and I remember how I felt. Like, it was like goosebumps. Like, I don't remember word for word, but it was basically like, just continue to be you. You're on the right path. Like, basically, like, almost like he was saying I was the chosen one without saying it. Um, and hearing that from him, because it's like, he could talk to anybody. He can call Ye. Mm -hmm. You know? He can call Tyga. He can call whoever he wants. And it's like, for him to just choose to, like, talk to me and tell me that at that moment when he can call anybody. Call us what they want, but they can't call us broke. Call me Mr. Take Your Way. I would say, of course, early, like, the first couple weeks, no, the first, like, week or two, I've dropped it. I started to see a lot of momentum and, like, a lot was coming in because I started, before music even popped for me, like, before that song, I only had, like, 600, 700 followers. And I feel like a lot of people always say, like, oh, I don't have help. I don't have support, nobody's reposting me, but like, I'm that example of like, you start from zero, like you have to start from zero. You can start with a handout and start with maybe 100,000 followers, you know? You can, but it's like, I'm showing people that it's possible that like, you can start from zero. There was no pre-existing clout or like, my name wasn't ringing bells before I really like, caught my record. Um, and I guess really, me, when I started to see more videos of Silk City and people singing and dancing out of L.A., mm -hmm. is when I, like, really knew. Because I feel, oh, well, for L.A. artists, it's always like, oh, we're stuck in L.A., we're stuck in L.A. And once I started to see my music travel on the East Coast, pulling up my stats and seeing my data, like, people listening to me in Carolina, and this was like, oh, wow. And this was early. This was, like, last, last July. And really seeing that is what did it for me. You gotta fuck it up, not the one who made the rules, no. Right, let me see you do it. Let. I feel like I'm changing with it. Like, I feel like I'm changing like the vibe of like LA artists. I think when you're not from LA and you look at LA artists, it's like, oh, West Coast stereotypical, traditional, and it's like boring and bland to somebody that's not from LA. But then it's an Atlanta artist, a New York artist that it looks cool to the LA artists. I mean, not the LA artists, but to like people that live in LA, mm -hmm. right? But it's like, we don't have that love, that same love. So I feel like for me, it's like looking at these other artists, like what is it about them, but what is it about us that makes us not that or not cool enough or not big enough? Because of course, we're still going to just be us. Like we're not saying we're going to try to be any, well, I'm not saying I'm going to try to be anybody that I'm not. Mm -hmm. But me being me is what's working. Because it's like, yeah, I'm an L.A. artist, but like I grew up listening to a lot of Atlanta or s Southern artists in general, mm -hmm. maybe more than West Coast. So it's like, you're not really, when it comes to me, when it comes to 310 Baby, yes, I am a 310 Baby. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more, it's so much more behind the scenes that people have not seen. And that will show itself as I drop more projects, do more stuff, mm -hmm. show more fits, pop out more pictures. They'll see, they'll see the influence really show itself. Yeah, yeah. Just continuing to be myself. Because it's like, yeah, the industry is fast, but that doesn't mean it changes me um, unless I allow it to, mm -hmm. which is super easy. But really just, of course, it's not, hmm, I'm not going to do everything I used to do. Because it's like, once again, I'm saying true to myself, but I haven't changed, my circumstances have. So just that's it, like still being me at the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, but just taking advantage and being appreciative of all these new opportunities and tools and resources that I have came up on. And once again, trying my best to be me. And all I can do is try. And I feel like we've been doing pretty good so far. Nights and Weekends. I made this album. Well, that was my debut album. Mm -hmm. Nights and Weekends. Released in January, top of this year. And at that time, I was in school. So, like, Nights nice and Weekends, it's like, I didn't think too hard about the name of the project. It was Nights nice and Weekends, and that's, that was a product of me working at night and on the weekend only, mm -hmm. having to go to school Monday through Friday, 8.30 or 3.30 every day. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's what that was, you know? And I feel like people won't appreciate that until later, which I'm okay with, mm -hmm. because it's like, maybe those aren't the best songs, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they aren't the best songs that they want to make, because as I get older, I'm going to get better, yeah. right? But... Later on, it'll be like, whoa, that's why it sounds like this, because this kid was really in school, but there still are some bangers on here. So I'm going to appreciate it and like, 
uh, yeah, so later on, later on. And then the next project I'm dropping, I'm working on my um, second album now. I don't have a date for it yet. Um, but it's like, now it's summertime. Mm-hmm. Now I'm done with school. Legally, I don't have to go back to school if I don't want to, right? So now it's like, what does that sound like? Nobody's heard, like, we've heard bangers. We've heard Rock Your Hips, my new single out, going up, going crazy. We've heard So City made that during school. So it's like, what does he sound like outside of school, having seven days a week, and nobody telling him what to do? I will say I'm going to have those bangers on there that everybody loves 3104, mm-hmm. but I'm going to also show you how deep my bag is and, like, I'm trying different things. I'm more than just what people may have thought or heard already um and just finding that balance of like experimental but still getting the job done and giving my fans what they want superstar um performer entertainer not just a rapper um and then it's just who I am as a person I feel like businessman CEO, boss. Um, I'm a fun person. I like to have fun. Mm-hmm. And I feel like with me being who I am and through No Baby the business, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. Because it's like I can't not be a fun person but then try to make like fun party music. Like where does that make sense? Mm-hmm. But even that, like, and then even down to like, certain songs that may not be as party vibe. Like, I have a song called No Matter What on nights and weekends. Like, where I'm talking about no matter what it takes, I had to get it done. There's no excuse. So, like, then I'm really giving them, it's not just through a no, it's, like, who I really am as a person. Like, giving them that emotion and, like, on this next project, that's one thing I'm really doing is I'm giving them, like, kind of, like, a a piece of, like, who I really am. Like, I get it, like, big star, like, performing vibe. Everybody, ah, fun, fun. But it's like, he's really a human. Like, he experiences, like, the same stuff we do. And I feel like it's perfect timing because it's, like, right when people may get bored of who I am. Right when they may say, like, dang, I mean, it's just party vibe, party vibe. And maybe, like, the same people that like the party vibe may not like when I'm talking about real life. But those people that do, those are the people that I'll see state to state, on tour, country to country. Yeah. Those are the people that stick around. Because they- this pack for a platinum single <laughs> to Cameron Miller, <laughs> a.k.a. We wanna- yeah, um, still feels fake to this day. I'm not sure, like, how long it will take for me to process it, but I feel like, once again, it's like, when all this is done, I'll finally be able to be like, a hundred things I've accomplished. But I feel like me not being able to, like, really feel like, like, yeah, it was dope, but, like, to like I really haven't even, like, accepted everything, like, this is what it is. But it's like, me not being able to yet, mm-hmm. this was keeping me, like, on my toes and wanting more. Because I tell people all the time, I don't feel like how big people say I am and all this good stuff, I've done this, I've done that. I don't feel that. Like, I still feel like that. Like, it may sound corny, but I still feel like that same person with just a couple more T-shirts and shoes. And, like, even when I perform, like, when I'm off that stage, it's no more of that. Like, it's like I'm that on the stage. Like, I'm 3 one on the stage. The moment I walk off, it's like... And... I think that's a part of it. I think that's just who I am as a person, though. What has it felt like for you um, to go from recording in your bedroom to now I'm assuming you're probably in a recording studio? No. Still Still on my phone. Okay. Yeah. I go to the studio to, like, mix my albums. Mm -hmm. Like, when it's done, like, I'll send my vocals off my phone. But every session I've ever made, like, I can pull up, like, the app with my songs. Oh, wow. Um, And, of course, like, it's not just, like easy access though like I have files and stuff but yeah I have every session I've ever made um I go to the studio sometimes but usually just to work with like producers or like people like that aren't just gonna send me something like let's go lock in Mm -hmm. like when I go work with Tyler Creator like I'm not just gonna be like bro send me a pack it's more like let's link up let's really cook you know what I'm saying but yeah I still record on my phone and sometimes when I link with producers in general like 
I'll still be like, send me a pack, but let's cook here. But some beats I like to take home with me. I think before that's all I had. I had no choice. Like I had no m money to go to the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like 150 to go to the studio is like that's like food. That's clothes. Like I could just go get fly for 150. You know what I'm saying? But then spend that on three hours and I might not make a hit. So then knowing that it's like I don't have a job. Like I'm 17 years old. Like I'm just gonna cook on my phone for free. I don't have to buy beats, I'm gonna screen record them, steal them. If they hit, I know I have to pay. And that's what I did for Silk City. I already thought this out in my head. I knew I needed a team eventually. There's really no excuse. I tell people this all the time. I say, you make the excuses. You like you, I never allowed like me not having anything to be the reason I don't make it. Because I wanted it too bad. When you want it too bad, you never let anything stop you. I think a lot of times I'll talk to people that like know me. And it'll be like, yeah, bro, like, this and this. And, like, okay, well, the same way, like, you're lost, I was lost, but I figured it out. So you can ask me the questions that I didn't know, but now I do so I can help you. Or do you just want to put on? Because a lot of people don't even want, they don't really want it. Like, they don't want to be the star. Or like, they don't really want to work to be the greatest. They just want the reward. They want the flash, the glam, the fame, the cars, the clothes, the women. With me, it's the accolades that I want because I want to go down in history as one of the greatest. Mm -hmm. I don't care about the money. I don't care about the clothes. I want to chase something that generations and generations after me can see. And I want to continue to inspire the youth and really show people that, like, anything you want to do, you can do. Mm -hmm. Like, there really is nothing impossible. Like, we give it that stamp of being impossible. And I didn't, I didn't, I wanted it too bad. I would say now, I would say Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have said Dre two months ago, but me seeing Dre come out at the Kendrick show was like, oh, that's Dre, like, because it's almost like, once again, how we say it's like the public figure and the human. Mm -hmm. I know Dre is like the public figure. So I'm not thinking, like, let me just see who knows Dre, right? But then seeing him there, it's like, yeah, I want to tap in with Dre. Tyler the Creator popped out. I was already aware of Tyler, you know, listening to him. So, like, him, like, I would say, let's see, who else? I linked up with Mustard already. I tapped in with Lil John. Like, all the pioneers of the game is who I want to reach. Yeah. Like, I talked to E-40. Like, all the older guys that people would, like, look past, I want to talk to them because they made the mistakes that, like, I don't have to. So trust me, I like I call all the all the old guys and like pick their brain. Mm -hmm. um, I will for sure. We can meet more and more people, talking to more people. Yeah. Anybody really that's willing to teach me something is who I want to meet. I would say Big Boy. He told me to just like stay on point because it's so easy to get distracted in this. He said if I just stay on point, like I'll look up and like regret it. I mean, not re like I won't regret it, mm -hmm. and I'll think. Like, like, I'll thank my future self. Like, thank you. Like, I mean, well, thank this, the present, the present. I'll thank who I am today mm -hmm. in the future. My future self will thank me. Um, yeah, it's just like, yeah, I remember that. Like, I remember what, like, I remember when he told me that, and I remember how I felt. Like, it was like goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't remember word for word, but it was basically like, just continue to be you. You're on the right path. Like, basically, like, Almost like he was saying I was the chosen one without saying it. Um, and hearing that from him, because it's like he could talk to anybody. He can call Ye. Mm -hmm. You know, he can call Tyga. He can call whoever he wants. And it's like for him to just choose to, like, talk to me and tell me that at that moment when he can call anybody. I feel like it's it's not response. Like, I don't feel like that I'm I have that responsibility yet. Because there's so many more, like, artists at the top that are like, oh, now you guys represent L.A. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is while nobody's really, really paying. Like, people are paying attention, but it's like they pay enough attention, like, to acknowledge. Like, they acknowledge doing that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, say this is one L.A., we're just one big family. It's like, Kendrick is, like, the guy right now. Yeah. Like, Kendrick is Kendrick at the end of the day. It's legend, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, while everybody's paying attention to Kendrick, it's doing you know, just cooking. I'm just working. I don't want too much attention. Like, I want the attention, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to where, like, oh, you run L.A., like, you got to hold us down. Because mm -hmm. I was already holding us down for a year without even without anybody saying it. Mm -hmm. I was the only, like, and this is, I'm saying this 
it's humble. But it's like, in LA, we didn't have no hit this year, really, besides Silk City. Yeah. I mean, Kendrick came and did what Kendrick did. I mean, that's Kendrick, that's a legend, but all the peers, all my, all, like, other artists are telling me, like, yeah, bro, you held us down. And, like, hearing that, it's like, dang. But I'm not going to take it as, like, I got to do L.A. like right. Like, oh, no, it's just, I got to hold us. Not like that. But mm-hmm. basically what I'm saying is kind of, but not really. Like, I don't want to accept it yet. Yeah. But by the time I accept it, it'll be, like, a given. Like, duh. You know? Because I'm only 18. Yeah. So maybe it's 24. Maybe it's 20. Maybe it's 19. Maybe we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going day by day. I'm taking it all in. I just want to work. I just want to work, pad my stats. I'm excited.